I have anxiety going to bed at night. If I'm short, I told Rao, well, that's when I started purchasing it. The rest is a funny story, but I won't reveal my accomplice. They assumed I was going to purchase $10 million worth of Bitcoin when I started buying it. It was $100 million that I wired in. Began purchasing it and ended up buying $25 million in a single day. Also, no one had ever spent $25 million on Bitcoin on their exchange in such a short period of time. They warned that the price would rise because the system was being overloaded and spreads were being blown out. Oh, I really must have this stuff. The pricing was absolutely jaw-dropping, by the way. And all I could think about was that some smart person would figure out how to bring the price up to $10, $11, $12, or $13. And then I would go after it. My anxiety levels were over the roof since I felt pressured to complete the trade before everyone else realized their mistake. I am therefore going to purchase it. They cornered me and told me, you know, you have to stop now. I swear to you, way too much spending. Basically, they cornered me and told me I was buying too much. The other users on the system think you're making prices go up, and I'm just like, are you serious? I mean, seriously. After that, I was so worked up that I couldn't sleep that night. They cut me off when I bought 20 million, and I wanted to buy 35 million that day. I couldn't sleep because of it. The thought crossed my mind. What if the 15 million dollars I refrained from purchasing suddenly vanishes? I'm looking at astronomical sums of money. Michael Saylor, who explains his bullish prediction for 2023 by analyzing Bitcoin's price movement and market factors, is here today to share his thoughts. Saylor cites two major reasons for this optimism. The impending Bitcoin having events in April and the possibility that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's Commission T would approve a Bitcoin spot ETF. Among the many proposals being considered by the SEC for a Bitcoin spot ETF, BlackRock has emerged as a major contender. Many are beginning to believe that a Bitcoin spot ETF could be approved in the near future thanks to BlackRock's considerable influence. As a culmination of efforts spanning more than a decade, this event is much anticipated by Bitcoin enthusiasts. Approval of a Bitcoin spot ETF would open the door to massive institutional investment, which would have far-reaching consequences for the cryptocurrency industry. Sovereign wealth funds, large enterprises, and even governments could show interest in this development. According to Saylor, he foresees a dramatic change in the financial environment. As a result of this decision, as major firms begin to include cryptocurrency in their balance sheets, the interview with Michael Saylor will offer significant insights into the impending changes in the cryptocurrency business, allowing us to go deeper into these viewpoints and comprehend why Bitcoin is set to revolutionize 2023. How much you purchase is actually irrelevant, isn't it? Basic premise remains the same. Must get everything immediately lest someone discovers my scheme. By the way, if you consider this an asset, you could argue you had a lot of tech exposure if you bought $100 million worth of Apple stock today. By the quarter's end, I'll have to decide whether to sell Apple and acquire Google or Amazon. Plus, I'm still somewhat exposed to the tech industry. Basically, you could switch out Twitter for Facebook or vice versa. You may come to the conclusion that Google is more appealing to you than Facebook. There will be no end to the world. Big tech is abundant. In fact, it's worth $10 trillion. Instead, you would purchase a crypto asset and purchase $100 million worth of Bitcoin. If you found that Bitcoin was your thing, the institutions that purchase these items will think along these lines. Were they planning to spend $100 million, $200 million, or $500 million when they came in? You have to ask yourself, okay, what do I want? after you make up your mind to have it. Big tech isn't for me since I'm wary of the inherent vulnerability to currency fluctuations. Having gold is not what I prefer. The gold miners are an issue, the system is open, and there is counterparty risk. Great, I'll take cryptocurrency. What cryptocurrency? The number of cryptos is 6500. From the looks of most of those though, which cryptocurrency is the most promising? The most valuable cryptocurrency by far is Bitcoin. Second best, please. 
Exceptional quality is unmatched. No cryptocurrency is second to none. I thought you were talking about Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency. There is no substitute. It's not on par with Facebook and Google. All right? This isn't like Amazon or Apple. Yes, I'm open to discussing Amazon or Apple, which is superior. I see them as two tech monopolies. From the opposite side, they appear to be really attractive, digital currency denominated in Bitcoin. Complete nonsense is this notion of 60% supremacy. Incredibly bad, I know, I know. See, if it were foolish, it's not even close to dominating. It's really dominant like 96 or 95. I see. The point is, it's supposed to be a store of value just like any other crypto asset, such as a crypto network or proof of war. Who needs 5% of other stuff in the last bucket? You're lucky if you can cobble together that much. Consequently, there isn't a serious rival. As a result, once you start down the road of big tech, I'm out. Solid gold. My gold allocation is different from this. Digital currency, Bitcoin is my t That's the sole one. Squeezing through a nozzle now costs $1 billion daily. Plus, you'll need to make the purchase. Once you've gone through that, you know I make fun of my friend Ericus about it. It would be wise for me to tweet. You can check in whenever you choose, but you'll never be able to check out. It's like the Hotel California of Assets. That is not permissible to tweet. That is a rather ominous illusion, you know. I am unable to tweet that. Absolutely not. Later on, I noticed that Nick tweeted about it earlier today. There's a tweet about it. He even tweeted about it. I really didn't think I was that dim, after all. You might say it's a one-way valve. All right, so it's just one method of purchasing. Given the alternatives, why is there only one way? Reason being, it lasts a long time. In other words, it is the pinnacle of long-term assets. If you fail to grasp this, you simply fail to grasp it correctly. In my opinion, 100 years is plenty of time to hold it. If you do the maths, it has the longest duration compared to any bond, stock, or gold. Thus, I have recently acquired the long-term safe haven asset of synthetic gold, which is of pharmaceutical quality. I purchased that. Better things don't exist. For what reason am I ever planning to sell it? Will I give it up for Google, sadly? I can't give it up for Google. No way I can give it up for Amazon. No way I'll give it up for Google. It is not convertible to any other cryptocurrency. This trade only works in one direction. Therefore, I never sell when I buy since every time I sell. End up paying more in taxes. Thus, I intend to sell it and get capital gains. Therefore, it is discouraged to sell any asset. If I could locate a superior treasury reserve asset, I wouldn't sell it. Longer durations are not available. Nothing will endure for as long as this. In terms of anti-fragility, there is nothing that can be found. In theory, nothing else can match this one in terms of long-term yield. I see. A combination of monetary inflation, increased technological utility, and soaring adoption would describe Bitcoin's long-term potential yield. All three in the short term. And, more importantly, the standards impact on the economy's long-term productivity growth. Consequently, those factors will all play a driving role. All of them will be the captivating drivers. So, what's the point of selling it now? As you pointed out, the only reasonable response is that I can accept the desires of maximalists who wish to purchase expensive luxury items like jets and yachts. Feel free to pursue your desire to purchase the grand villa of your dreams along with the necessary paperwork. A passionate investment a cost. I believe I could honor that. On the other hand, you will sell it to donate a kidney or save a life if the situation demands it. You have my respect. However, it must be a passionate investment. Selling the long-term pharmaceutical-grade synthetic safe haven asset for the sole purpose of trading it into another financial asset is a foolhardy move. You had the item sold and then unsold it because the first buyer was willing to take on additional risk in the form of fiat debasement, complexity, or shorter duration. You can assume that anyone who claims they're going to exchange it doesn't have a clue. In other words, they have no idea what they're doing or even what it is. You are going to waste all of your spare cash on it. Moment you figure it out, put all your money into something and hold on to it for the rest of time. I see. 